Welcome to the Start Empire Wire Founders Podcast, where we make entrepreneurial founders a top priority. Each episode features risk takers, business builders, community shapers, institutional and government supporters, and our local startup ecosystem. Tune in weekly to hear all about what's happening with the movers and the shakers of Southern California's Inland Empire and beyond. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Founders Podcast. Today we are here with none other than Maritza Gomez. She, as you know, or maybe you don't know, is the person who is over Nabo Inland Empire. However, she also is the founder of MG Custom Printing. So I want Marissa to go ahead and introduce herself. Tell us all about who you are. Give us your introduction. Thank you so much, Various. Um, yes, for those of you that know me, hello. For those of you that don't, I look forward to meeting you in person one day. Um, as Various mentioned, my name is Marisa Gomez. I am the owner and founder of MG Custom Printing. We are a digital uh, merchandise uh, printing company. We print on merchandise for other uh, entrepreneurs, other artists. Uh, I am also the current chapter president uh, for NABO Inland Empire, and NABO stands for National Association of Women Business Owners, and the Inland Empire chapter. And on another note, I'm also a business counselor with the Inland Empire Women's Business Center. That's right. Yes, I'm, I'm all over the place, but as long as we're helping the community, you know, I'm all for it. Awesome. So Marisa, you um, have been really involved in the local Inland Empire business scene. Last year, you were recognized uh, and given an award of some type. Tell us about that. Um, it was actually, it was a recognition, but uh, it was through, well, I mean, not to toot my own horn or anything, <laughs> but, you know, I have various recognitions. Yeah, uh, but the most current one was from um, the National Latina uh, National Latina Business Woman NLBWA IE. Um, mm. It was I was the nominee for the Business Woman of the Year. Um, unfortunately, I didn't take home the actual big award, but it's the recognition that counts. Yeah, well, I mean, we we recognized you, and we we wrote an article uh over that event so your name was in it has been on our website several times you know oh, at start you. empire wire and so now we're getting this this official interview so tell us a little bit about yourself uh who is young maritza growing up and you know what 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 brought you to the place where you wanted to create a startup be in business for yourself yeah, well, that's, um, I don't think nobody has really asked me, you know, who was young Maritza? Um, well, I mean, young Maritza was this very timid girl that she would rather hang out with little kids than kids her own, uh, her own age. Very quiet. Um, but, you know, throughout the years, I think as many of us, we, we find our voice. But um, I came to the U.S. when I was nine years old. Yeah. Um, I went to elementary here, high school, middle school. So pretty much this, the U.S. was my is my second home or it's considered my home. Yeah. Because I don't remember much of my uh, my life in Mexico, mm -hmm. at least not yet. Um, so I, I tell people I was reborn when I came to the U.S. Mm. Um, I came as a lot of people my age um, or a lot of the stories that you hear sometimes on the news, um, I was considered what society calls uh, undocumented or a dreamer. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I still found ways to get educated. I made sure that my mom always said, you know, you have to make sure that you're educated, right? That you that you educate yourself because that was the reason, one of the reasons why she wanted us to come here to find a better education and a better life. Yeah. Yes. Um, so even in high school, I found out, not I found out, but you know, the realization hit, like, you know, you can't go and apply to, to get scholarships because you're undocumented. Mm -hmm. But I still, um, I've always found ways. I mean, there's always a way to in everything. Just because right. people say, 
no, you're you can't. I mean, you have to find your yes people. Yes. Um, I found ways to continue my education right after high school, uh, even though it took me longer than your traditional student to mm -hmm. get at least an associate. Uh, it took me about nine years just to get my associate's degree. Then, thankfully, um, there were some changes in the laws thanks to yes. the California Dream Act. I was able to to go back to school to work on my uh, on my bachelor's degree. Yeah. And I and I did that. I was able to to get my bachelor's degree in 2016 from Oof. Cal State San Bernardino. <laughs> so um, just a quick time frame. I, I graduated high school in 1999. Yeah. And I finished my education in 2016. Hey, you know what? You finished it. A lot of yes. people don't even finish it. Like, yeah. So you finished yes. it. Tenacity. Yeah. Tenacity. Oh. Yes, definitely. And all that while being undocumented. Mm. Um, so, I mean, the there, reason I started. Um, there's no and, handicap. There's there's no there's no handicap, right? You No, no, no. So if, yes. If I was able to start my business, get an education while being undocumented, mm. anybody out there, you know, you're your current situation shouldn't limit you from what you want to do you just have right. to it's not your time yet you just have to get all of your your um i like to explain it as you're still growing but you're growing your roots mm -hmm. so when it's time it's your time to blossom you're gonna start growing upwards and instead of saying well i could have i should wait or it's not the right time Go and get that, you know, attend that networking event, get mm. attend that workshop. You know, you're going at your own pace. It's okay to be a late bloomer. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and um, I started MG Custom Printing as a need because of my immigration status. There were a lot of different changes uh, in the law that didn't allow me to, to work or to legally mm -hmm. work. And um, I decided, well, the only way that I can continue to to feel like I'm contributing to society, to my household, is by creating a job for myself. And that's right. what I did with MG Custom Printing. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we always hear of the tenacious stories of people who have come into the United States and they have built the life while people who may have grown up here they're just like you know <laughs> they're they're not as tenacious let's just put yeah. it that way so man big kudos to you Thank so you. let me ask you what need does your startup meet custom printing what does it all what does it all meet yeah yeah well the need that my business is meeting for the community uh, i mean you would hit People hear printing like right away, they think of paper printing. Yeah, there's yeah. plenty of companies out there that do paper printing. Your local staples or your local office people do paper printing. But the printing that we do is on merchandise. So mm. we're printing, we're printing on merchandise that can be used for promotional purposes. Yes. But also for everyday use. Um, okay. as souvenirs. Um, so I am uh, I'm helping our mission is to contribute to the growth of entrepreneurs and creators by providing mm. digital printing solutions with with low minimums. Okay. So I allow other businesses if they have uh, a design that they really want to put on a mug on merch to sell uh, or on, on uh, graphic designers or an artist uh, for them to buy a mug for me, turn around and resell it. So at the same time, we're both growing. You know, I'm growing as a business owner, and they're adding uh, additional income to their to their product line. What What's the volume normally that you require for for certain runs? Because I'm a um, graphic designer as well by trade. Oh, awesome! <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're gonna understand a lot of the a lot of yes. the things that I'm gonna talk about. Perfect. Uh, my minimum is 36. Okay. And you can mix and match your designs. Nice with other companies in order for oh and i give the best price at 36. yeah so whether you order 36 or you order 100 you're still it's still going to be the same price where Very my cool. online competitors i believe you only you can only order one design 
and you have to order like hundreds in order to get that that price break right right yeah and are you doing booklets magazines and things like that as well uh no so it's just uh merchandise just the merch okay so like bags and t-shirts and uh, mouse pads pads. journals (laughs) oh cool okay that's cool so awesome so so give us a, a few examples of some of the entrepreneurs locally that you've partnered with and you've worked with on you know printing out merch and maybe conventions you've done give us a few a few examples of those yeah of course um so my biggest audience are um those artists that you know they're either digital artists or they they put their creations on canvases and they make prints, they make buttons and so on. So yes. they are my biggest um, customers. Um, they do pop-ups, you know, um, I usually oh. tell them. So they're, yeah, you you may, maybe if you do, uh, if you've been to some of the local pop-ups, yes. you've seen people selling mugs, you know, it's a 50-50 chance that it was the mug printed by us yes that's cool the pop-ups are going crazy around here like there's so many pop-ups i've been following these pop-up accounts like crazy (laughs) (laughs) on instagram on instagram yes yeah well that's actually how we started our business we started doing pop-ups okay tell us about that yeah so um since i was still a student uh well and maybe i didn't mention that I started the business in 2014 whilst uh, I was a student at Cal State San Bernardino. Okay. Um, now that I think of those days, it's like, I don't know where I found the tenacity to, to do this, but- You did uh, it. I, w- I did it, yes. Um, I was doing pop-ups on the weekends, going to school during the week, doing my homework during the pop-ups. Wow. Um, but, you know, I was out there promoting my business, promoting my service. My first pop-up was at the Uplands uh, Farmer's Market in 2014. Okay. Um, I always like to share that story to kind of give people like a visual. Uh, I had yeah. a table, one of those six-foot tables. I had a borrowed tablecloth uh, and a table runner. And I only had maybe six items on my table. And that was it. Wow. When you see all these pop-ups, you know, they have all these props around them, all yes. this merchandise. But that's how I started. The next time I went, I took an easy up. Um, I made, I, oh, and I had homemade business cards. Hey. I, went, I went to Staples or I had craft paper. And if, if you're a crafter, you know that those edges are very fussy. Yeah. So those were my business cards. <laughs> You know, no shame is no. always it's always a beginning, right? Yes. yes. I had a homemade um poster. Nice. I mean, my my booth looked like a project, like if it was a school project. That's freaking but awesome. I, I kept showing up. I mean, I may did you, or may have yeah. Did you land any any uh business that first time? Um, not the first time. Uh-huh. But what I kept telling myself um, and anybody that went to help me, like, I'm promoting my business. Right. I'm giving people those. I'm planting those seeds of what can I print on these mugs? Yes. Uh, what can I print on the merchandise? Uh, and I did land two small, um, two small accounts, yes. which was like, I was really grateful. Very awesome. Um, and then from there, I mean, I started printing my own designs on merchandise so people can actually take home what was printed. Um, and it actually took maybe about three years okay. for me to actually find my niche or my specific target market for my retail side. Cause I do retail and I do wholesale. Okay. Uh, and, and who is the niche for the wholesale? Who is the target market for the retail? So for wholesale is those um, business owners or creators that uh, that want to have their own designs printed on merchandise for them to turn around and resell. Yes. Um, and then on my retail is uh, the Latino community. Nice. I have uh, Spanglish uh, designs or Spanglish sayings printed on mugs. Oh, that's on cool. Um, yeah, because I mean, 
we are the fastest, uh, one of the fastest growing demographics. Yeah. And and at that time, these bigger chains weren't targeting us. So, mm. if I mean you, you can. I'm pretty sure now you can. You can go to a big store and find something in Spanish. I mean, in hopes that it's made by a, uh, a, right. a Hispanic or Latino uh, creator. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, you really can't. But you've got you've got a little bit of a corner on the market there mm-hmm. too. Yeah, that's really yes. good. Yeah. The Inland Empire startup ecosystem industry is tremendously fragmented. A few top tier hubs, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego are well covered by media, events, and data platforms. Finding reliable information relevant to startups or the tech industry in the Inland Empire is extremely difficult. As a result, startups can't scale fast enough. Investors are having a hard time finding the right deals and corporates can't find the right companies to partner with for their innovation activities. Start Empire Wire, the leading Inland Empire startup publication is providing the Inland Empire startup ecosystem with the most accurate, engaging business and financial data, events and news. Our reach of entrepreneurs, C-level executives, angels, VC investors, startup employees, key management at innovative corporates, and big tech is the solution for your B2B or B2C needs. As we build out our platform, we're looking for partners. This is your opportunity to get in on the ground level. If you're looking to align yourself with the local and growing startup and tech ecosystem of the Inland Empire, we have created the platform to get your name noticed and the opportunity for you to grow the recognition of your brand. Contact us today for availability and pricing options. We look forward to our partnership with you. That's very awesome. Okay, so you. <clears throat> you are doing wholesale, you're doing retail. Now tell us about the growth of, you know, you know, from the beginning. I know you already touched a little bit of to where you are now, you know. So you're being recognized, you're you know, give us that background. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go back to that timid Maritza that, you know, okay. pretty quiet. Um I honestly, I've never really liked sales or at least being that salesperson. Mm-hmm. I never really liked the pushy salespeople. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But what I did since I knew I was very quiet or an introvert, uh, I started volunteering around the community mm. where it was gonna force me to talk to people. That's really and good. I, yes, and I actually started that at Cal State. Okay. Since my my major was entrepreneurship. Uh, I mean, as you know, the entrepreneurship program For, is Professor amazing. Stahl. Were you yes. were you one of his students? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was that's one freaking of his awesome! Students. Yes. <clears throat> um, I mean, I still remember that presentation. We had to give a uh, a presentation, mm-hmm. uh, and going back to me being an introvert, I actually stuttered during my presentation because oh. I heard myself speak. <laughs> oh no. Yes, uh, and it's recorded. I know it's recorded. He sent me the recording, but Dr. Stoll, I never saw that recording. One day I will. <laughs> he's probably um, w- he's probably watching this interview too. <laughs> yeah. So hi, Dr. Stoll. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> yes. Um, so it started um, as that. I started volunteering around my community, um, where I would be forced to talk to people, and people would be forced to come and talk to me because I had the answers. Um, cool so way. I I started doing that. I would I would go to any free or paid uh, community event that mm-hmm. I could just go out there and get myself out there, pass out business cards left and right, um, and then I started making connections with people that I would receive uh, Insta not Instagram but Facebook uh, friend yes. requests. Okay. So I started you know friending them. I created a professional. Facebook where I would only share professional stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, one opportunity leads to another and so on. And I started saying yes to myself. 
Mm, you started saying yes to yourself. I started saying yes to myself. That's really Even good. though I had no clue what I was doing. Yes. But at the same time, like I'm learning, you know, it's part of the growth. Yeah. And, you know, there is a, <clears throat> I don't know who said it. Actually, um, I, I read a lot of, um, or I do, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. One of the guys who I listen to, uh, his name is Grant Cardone. Uh, love the guy. But he, he had one of his rules he says like always say yes you know mm -hmm. <laughs> that's really powerful too because yes unlocks a lot of things like even if you can't immediately fulfill it just say yes you know just and of course fulfill <laughs> you know <laughs> but yeah that's great so okay so tell us tell us about okay so you were going out volunteering you made a lot of connections building up your network would you recommend that to college students today and like would you recommend anything else because i mean let it you know that i think that's great advice if so yeah no i mean definitely if you're a college student regardless of your age because i know college students can be different uh age dem guess. there's a different demographic right um yeah volunteer there's always opportunities at your university in your community you want to start building that network so once you graduate you already you're already known in the community for something that's even so if good. it's it, even if you're the person that's always showing up and um to clean up after an event you know people you may not think that people are not watching or that they're not seeing you but they are people people are looking at you um, so networking is super, extremely important. It should be on your top to do's. Top to do's. And you said it a little bit earlier as well. You said you were planting seeds. You said mm -hmm. you saw it as planting seeds. Um, and I, I think, I think that can be for pretty much anything we do, right? Uh, every action is like a seed. So eventually they're going to see that return even if they're volunteering they may not see that immediate return but they will see it yeah that's mm -hmm. really really good all right so marissa tell us about the current stage that your startup is in right now and what are some of the needs of your startup yeah well my um and i know i got a little distracted <laughs> because um I started doing pop-ups. I was a student, so my, I was a home-based business when I was doing pop-ups for, I want to okay. say, maybe five, six years. Yes. I would I would do every all the printing from home. So we do our printing in-house. Mm. So meaning we, we print our own stuff here in Riverside. Nice. Um, I started outgrowing my home uh, at the end of like 2019. Uh, there was boxes everywhere. Um, Sometimes I'm glad my neighbors didn't call the cops on me. <laughs> We're getting deliveries, commercial deliveries in a residential area. Oh, yeah. We're getting uh, almost midnight customer pickups. Well, they think you were doing drugs or selling drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I am so grateful for my neighbors that they knew I was, um, I was uh, printing. printing and I was delivering mugs. That's M-U-G-S. Okay, people, M-U-G-S. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we started our growing my, the, my home um, and at the same time in 2019 I was privileged enough to be able to adjust my status Nice. so adjusting my immigration status actually opened up more or adjusting my status allowed those seeds that I was planting to mm -hmm. blossom Nice. Um, yeah. Yes. So I incorporated the business. Very awesome. I I I had already I had that um that his history as a business owner already. So mm -hmm. I, I could get business credit. Um so at the end of twenty nineteen I started um pulling the going forward and nice. taking the leap on calling commercial spaces. That's right. I found one. It was actually the only one that I had seen. And I said, yes. I signed nice. the paperwork at the end of uh, 2019 in December, my move in date. Woo. No, I take that. I always I always miss that pandemic year. I take it. Oh, yeah. Like the lost year. It's like the lost yes. year. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me rephrase 2020, not 2019. So 2020. 
I think we all forget about that year. <laughs> I think so. Um, so during the pandemic, um, the business was still, you know, printing left and right. Um, I signed the, my lease documents in December, November, December. So my nice. move in date was going to be um, February 2021. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, I moved into a commercial space, a 1400 uh, warehouse. Nice. Where once I saw all of the boxes mm. and pe some of my clients would come, they would say, you had all this at your house? <laughs> <laughs> I would say, <laughs> yeah, <simply> and proudly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you you got to make the best with what you have as an entrepreneur. That's see, that's what I love about entrepreneurship. <laughs> it's that you're not hindered at any level. No. You're only hindered by your 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 level of tenacity and your you know your level of uh, ability to you know want to innovate. You know, and so I think, yeah. Good on, yeah, you. So, Good on you. Um, yeah, so we're in our, we're going, um, we signed another a lease for two more years when our lease, because it was only a one year lease when it expired in mm. February. So now we're here for two more years. Okay. Um, we're, con we're still continuing to grow, to, to learn is the it process a, of. Is it a space where customers come visit you there? Okay. Where are you guys at? Uh, what's the location? We are located in Riverside, uh, 2001 Third Street. Uh, Third that's Street. in the okay. Kansas, Kansas and Third Street. And Kansas we and are Third Street. Mm -hmm, unit awesome. B as in boy. Yeah. Awesome. That's super awesome. Okay. And at this point, you've moved into the building. You, you know, you just got a new printer. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, what is so, that? Is that a large format? What is it? What is it? It is. It's <laughs> okay. It's what I like to call a big girl printer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, I say that because with sublimation, the other process that I use, it's still small format. So okay. I mean, I was able to run it from home. Nice. Uh, but now I have a, a UV printer. Oh, cool. So I'm able to print uh, on more items, foam boards, on wood, metal. Wow. Uh, glass. Uh, and it, it's a flat printer, though. Um, okay. But, okay. you know, on, on tumblers. So it, it opens up the possibilities a little bit more for me and then for my clients as well. Um, mm. But I mean, yeah, it's it's so an like signage, printer. signage to be able to print um, signage and stuff like that. Or, or? That's a That's a different printer. Different so I'm printer. able to okay. do the foam, the foam boards because it's a foam flat boards. printer. Okay. It's, it doesn't have a roller. Right. So like those yard signs that you see, you know, oh, where, yes. you know. like real estate signs. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, that's cool. The real estate signs, like the phone boards that people would give, get sometimes printed for, uh, to recognize somebody on an award ceremony. Yeah. Um, yeah. Things like that. So I'm able to do it for, for both those people that need that marketing material, but for somebody that wants to print their own design and then resell it as merchandise. Oh, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. All right. So now what are the current needs now that you, you know, you got your new printer and all that. What are the current needs that you can foresee or that, that you have, uh, for your startup? The current needs, needs. um, let me see. I really, I really wasn't too ready for this question, but I'm hoping to my biggest need is uh, I'm hoping to push my retail, my retail more. business. Okay. More. Yes. Uh, as many of you know, and I'm actually going to put in a plug for them, the Cheech, the Chicano Art Center opened yeah. here in downtown Riverside. Right. Um, so I'm, and my items are targeted towards the Latino community. So like, yes. you know, they like kind of go together. Um, I, I created a postcard, which I mm -hmm. did print, you know, I outsourced the printing. Um, and it's a greeting card, a postcard, excuse me. And it says, saludos desde Riverside. Okay. So my current need now is more for that Latino, uh, com the Latino community, community that wants something that's personalized, that speaks to them, that mm -hmm. represents them, uh, to give to somebody else here in that community. I mean, nice. I, I don't know if that really answers the question, but. Oh no, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely, uh, uh, 
a great answer. One of the things I want to ask you as well is, um, have you uh, ever met Juan Navarro from Eastside Art House? I haven't. Um, okay. I follow him. I follow the page. I mean, in their their the the art house. I yes. live in the East Side neighborhood. So. Okay. Okay. So they're right <laughs> next. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna connect you guys because I think maybe there could be a connection there for you. I think that'd be really yeah. awesome. Definitely. Okay. And I know one of my clients is. Um, he's an artist there or like a I don't I, I don't know what they call them yeah but he goes in there and creates you know his artwork well his own personal art but he well, I, space. I know the the artist from the art house do pop-ups around mm -hmm. around Riverside so I mean like that's a possible partnership that you could have for each artist who comes into the art house pop up i don't know we, we don't want to say too much because yeah. he's gonna be on the podcast too and oh, awesome. I, yeah he's gonna be on the podcast we've already well we haven't published but we've already recorded his podcast so oh, perfect yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. i look forward to to listening and watching theirs as well yeah awesome okay so now short-term goals two immediate short-term goals for, for for mg uh printing Okay, so then short term could be considered, um, you know, within the this the year. Summer. Yeah, within yeah. This year. Yeah. So within this year is to really push our retail, um, our retail side. I have mm -hmm. an intern from CSUSB that's helping me during the summer. That's cool. Um, I'm gonna have a uh, a marketing short term is to reach those thousand TikTok followers. There we go. We need this. Yes. Okay. So you're trying to get to a thousand, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because TikTok is gonna, hot. Yes. It's going to open up that live feature on TikTok. At least, you know, who knows if that changes. That's true. No. What, what, why not go live on Instagram too? Yeah. Well, on Instagram, I do have a lot of followers. I okay. think I have a little over 5,000. Yes. Um, wow. But That's really good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're on TikTok, you can follow me under Mug Dealer Hefa. That's my retail. Um, Mug Dealer. Mug, M-U-G, okay? okay. M-U-G. <laughs> uh, Hefa, it, it translates to Mug Boss. Okay, <laughs> Mug cool, Dealer cool. Boss. <laughs> Mug Dealer Boss, hey. Yeah, but in Spanish, Mug Dealer Hefa. Mug Dealer Hefa, uh, okay. So those are my short term. Uh, in future, I mean, I We're gonna go do. For future three years, five years in 10 years what do you yes. see yourself in three years okay in three years i see myself moving out of my lease and into my own commercial property nice nice that i own that i don't have to ask for permission to yes to paint or to do something outside uh five right. years five years um continue hopefully in that commercial space or maybe mm -hmm. even uh, open a creative space okay. for for creators and entrepreneurs that are starting businesses similar to mine. Okay. Where they have the tools or the equipment that they need if they don't have a space at home. Mm. Um, you know, not everybody's privileged enough to have a space at home True. or to live in a home where they have the space to run their business. Some That's business true. owners run their space from their living room or their car so yeah. that's my goal to sure. have that and in 10 years um which i won't share what that goal is but i really i really have another business idea in mind oh. that same is going to help the community because i'm all about community um, yes i i like to say that you know a lot of people say that they're self-made that they made it on their own but uh, I'm community made. My community yeah. makes me. If right. it wasn't for my community supporting me, whether it's through a podcast, uh, right. invitation to speak through a pop up, you know, That's I so wouldn't true. be here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I want something that I can give back to the community, yes. where it's just gonna, it's just gonna continue to grow our communities, our inland empire. Not only you yes. know Riverside, but the inland empire. Okay. Awesome. Well, that, that does for the questions, Marisa. Um, where can people, please tell us two things. Where can people find you at online and offline? And then 
do you guys currently have anything going on you want to let people know about yes so you can find um me uh, uh on linkedin maritza gomez but for the business uh mg custom printing and you can okay. see the spelling under my right here under un, under my my face my picture um but i'm on instagram and on facebook and on if you are on tiktok i would love it if you follow me under mug dealer hefa um, we are on tiktok instagram and facebook as well um for nabo we actually do have an event coming up uh, nabo that's good nabo yeah okay we have our installation um, that's going to be on the 21st and it's going to be with our uh, one of our sponsors and a community partner as well, uh, Ampac Business Impact, Capital. Yeah. Ampac, so yes, it's going to be at their new location in Ontario. Very cool. Um, so, you know, if you're seeing this before the 21st, you know, I would welcome you to, to attend. Yes. But also check out our website, nabo uh nawbo-ie.org okay we we have some amazing things planned um throughout the inland empire not only you know in the riverside county or san Bernardino county we're actually hoping to expand um to the coachella valley uh, area Very as cool. well and tell us about the joy you get from working doing the nabo stuff well everything everything that i do aligns you know, yes. everything is like business related. My my business, Nabo, the Inland Empire Women's Business Center. I I get a joy and a satisfaction of knowing that I'm helping my community grow. I'm mm. helping young Maritzas. I'm giving yes. them a voice. I'm helping them find their voice mm. um, in their community on the national level. Since Nabo is an advocacy organization for right. for business owners, so it's just. Um, also being a positive light for the undocumented community. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. If you are a young Maritza, you <laughs> should really, even if you're not a young Maritza, you should consider um, checking out the installation that's happening with Nabo Inland Empire. You should also follow Maritza online, uh, follow MG Custom Printing online is there a website that they can go to yes. as well okay yes. what is the website so both uh, it's mgcustomprinting.com that's okay. the wholesale and then of course there's a website for mug dealer hefa as well mug dealer okay. uh, hefa.com mug mug dealer with an m ladies yes. and gentlemen <laughs> so <laughs> we're so grateful to have you on here thank you uh you know i really appreciate that you had me on 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 nabo's uh platform as well and we will continue to work together in the future. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have just had the opportunity to tune in to another version of the Founders Podcast. Be sure you click that like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel or on iTunes and whatever podcast platform you're listening on, please subscribe and give us a rating. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Maritza. For being a part of this. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace. Adios.